Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will prove complete reducibility for finite dimensional representations of SL2. So, let me recall uh, what we have done so far and then uh, we will actually get into proving this complete reducibility. So, I will begin with recalling some of the ideas that we have seen in earlier lectures. Okay. First uh, thing is, uh, so it does not matter like whether you work with SL2 or any uh, Lie algebra. Okay. So, let us say G is a finite dimensional Lie algebra over complex numbers. So, then uh, we have some information about uh, irreducible representations of G. Okay. So, let us say V is a finite dimensional irreducible representation of G. So, then what one can do? One can actually talk about uh, given a subset okay, sub representation generated by that subset. Okay. So, that notion one can define for any uh, representation not a problem. So, let me just uh, define it here uh, on this side okay, and then we will use it here for the irreducible representation. So, you take W to be finite dimensional representation of G. Suppose let us say I have given a subset S of W. Okay. So, then I want to talk about uh, sub representation of W generated by S. So, I want to talk about this. So, what is this? This is the sub representation of W generated by capital S. So, what it is? It is actually basically by definition you can take it to be intersection of all sub, sub representation uh, that contains S. Okay. So, you can take it to be intersection of all W dash where W dash is uh, G sub representation and S is contained in W dash. So, it is not hard to see intersection of any family of uh, G, G sub representation will be again a sub representation and if S is contained in W dash then it is clear that S will be contained in W dash okay, intersection of W dash. So, in particularly this sub representation of W generated by this S is the smallest uh, sub representation that contains S. Okay. This is the smallest sub representation of W that contains yes. Okay. So, now let us specialize to this uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation. Okay. So, maybe I will actually state one exercise which is uh, which is actually very uh, nice. Okay. Maybe the, that one can do it for first uh, some singleton uh, yes and then you can do it for any general S not a problem. So, what is exercise? Suppose S is some singleton V. So, let us say this is sitting inside W where W is uh, representation G representation. So, then we talk about this uh, uh, sub representation generated by this V. Okay. This is the sub representation generated by V. So, how one can get as a space? Okay. So, this is actually exactly if you think about it, you can take any elements of G and then act it on V. Okay. So, so then so that element must be again part of this uh, sub representation generated by V. Okay. What I mean by that? If I take x i 1 etcetera x i k coming from G and then if you apply x i 1 on x i 2 and so on x i k of v. Okay. Then this must be actually element of your sub representation generated by v. Okay. But if you think about it the span of this will be again sub module. So, that will be exactly your uh, g sub representation generated by v. Okay. So, what I want to say? So, I claim that see this uh, sub representation generated by V. Okay. So, this is the exercise. So, 
So, this is span by all possible words ok. So, you are sequentially applying may be I will write it clearly. So, you take x y 1 apply it on x i 2 apply and so on x i m applied on v ok. You take all possible things where this x i 1 etcetera x i m they are all coming from g. So, now we can allow m to be actually 0 so that you can actually have empty word ok. So, this uh, you allow m in g plus. So, when m equal to 0 you get this whatever this is on the right side to be just v ok. So, in that sense uh, you can see that uh, this sub representation of this w generated by v is given by the span of this. So, first of all by taking m equal to 0 you can get v in this uh, sub representation generated by v ok and it is clear that if you call this is right hand side then the right hand side should be subset of this v ok. So, this is easy to check for the other uh, side. So, you need to verify what is on the right hand side is actually g sub representation, but if I take any x in g and then if I take any v in this uh, sorry any w in this uh, right hand side sorry. So, we will check. So, let me write properly. We verify the right hand side gives us g sub representation ok. So, you start with this right hand side take some w and w w in this and then for any x in g what we need to verify we need to verify x dot w should be in this right hand side. But what is w? So, w will be some combination of this x i 1 acted on x i m of v ok where this i 1 etcetera i m will vary. So, it is just a finite sum. So, to prove that x dot w is in right hand side it is enough to prove that x dot x i 1 etcetera x i m of v this is inside right hand side. But if you think about it this is just a word with uh, one extra term ok this is just uh, some y i 1 y i 2 etcetera y m plus 1 of v where y i circle coming from uh, your Lie algebra. So, that says that uh, this sub uh, representation generated by v is nothing but span of all these elements theoretically ok. So, it is not hard to generalize this exercise uh, to actually uh, to other subsets. For example, uh, if you take uh, S to be just a subset of w where w is given g representation. So, then what will be the sub representation generated by generated by this yes. So, this will be just all possible combinations ok. You take uh, span of over c and then now you apply x i 1, x i 2, etc., x i m on some v s ok, where v s is also varying and this m is also varying and this i 1 etcetera x i m they are also varying ok. So, in that way you will be able to get all all this uh, elements of this uh, sub representation g sub representation generated by capital S. So, this is in in some sense implicitly used in uh, uh, in uh, understanding the finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL2. But the thing is uh, because this SL2 is actually very small uh, Lie algebra and the commutator relations are very very explicit. So, that is why we, we were able to make very specific choice of uh, basis of this uh, 
finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL2 uh, on which uh, the elements of this SL2C act, acts like some very explicit way. So, that was possible for SL2C. So, now uh, if we go back to our uh, original uh, question, okay, what we can say about uh, given any finite dimensional irreducible representation of G. So, if you take V to be any okay, finite dimensional finite dimensional irreducible representation of G, then if I start with any V non-zero inside capital V, then it is clear that I can look at this sub representation generated by V because this is going to be non-zero sub representation. So, this has to be entire V. So, this also forces that using our earlier uh, remark, this V has to be span of all these elements x i 1 applied on x i m on V, where this uh, uh, m is from G plus and then this x i 1 etcetera x i m coming from G. So, with the convention that when m equal to 0, this x i 1 etcetera x i m on V is just V. So, this is the convention. Okay. So, when m equal to 0, this corresponds to empty word. So, this you get V. So, this is somewhat very useful information about finite dimensional irreducible representation. Okay. Later, if we get time, uh, I will actually talk about what is called this uh, PBW theorem for universal enveloping algebra of G. Okay. So, there uh, we will be interested in establishing a basis uh, that looks like this. Okay. Uh, so, so, using the that particular basis PBW basis of this universal enveloping algebra, we will be able to get very specific spanning set for this irreducible representations of G. And then it is actually a very interesting question in representation theory that uh, whether one will be able to actually come up with a nice basis that coming from this uh, PBW, PBW type uh, spanning set. Okay. So, yeah, I need to introduce that universal lumping algebra and so on for that uh, we will actually do that uh, in some other class. But it is now it is clear to understand this finite dimensional uh, representation irreducible representation of G, we need to understand this successive okay, uh, or application of this elements of G on some single vector V. But the thing is this G in practice could be like very very large Lie algebra. Okay, for example, we can restrict ourselves to only a basis of G. But if the dimension of G is really really big, then we have lots of choices for this exercise. So then uh, we end up getting really really lot more elements. Okay, so then that makes it actually kind of uh, very difficult to handle uh, this spanning set. Okay, so I'm not claiming that this spanning set will be somewhat easier to handle. But in SL2 theory, we saw that this spanning set is actually somewhat nice. We got very, very nice uh, information about by replacing uh, uh, this generating vector by some suitable vector called maximal vectors. Okay. So, now let us move to this uh, complete reducibility of finite dimensional representation of SL2C. So, let me recall the definition of complete reducibility. Okay. So, a finite dimensional representation V is called complete reducible, completely reducible if V can be written as direct sum of okay, finitely many irreducible representations. So, as I actually written here, I am not talking about any particular uh, algebra or anything. So, you can see that this completely reducible one can define in any category of representation over any algebra. Now, if you are interested in uh, SL2 representation, you start with finite dimensional representation of SL2 and then you demand uh, this uh, V can be written as direct sum of uh, 
irreducible representation of SL2. Okay. So, let me recall what we did for finite dimensional irreducible representation. So, if V of D if you take okay, this is a finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL2C. So, we saw that uh, the operator H acts on V D diagonally okay, or semi simply and this operators X Y they act on V D nilpotently. Okay, so, these thing, things we already observed. So, if we actually have this complete reducibility then what will happen? So, using these uh, using this remark we can easily see that H should act on any finite dimensional representation of SL to C as semi simply or diagonally. Similarly, X and Y also should act on any finite dimensional representation of SL to C uh, nilpotently. Okay. So, from this plus using this complete reducibility, so we can get H acts diagonally or semi simply on any finite dimensional representation of SL to C. Similarly, X and Y act nilpotently on any finite dimensional representation of SL2. Okay. So, this is somewhat uh, a hint uh, to actually how to go about uh, proving this complete reducibility. So, we will come to this uh, later. But before that, uh, here are some general remarks about uh, how one can actually uh, deal this complete reducibility or even like this problem of breaking any representation into some smaller representation. So, this is a very, very important idea actually one actually sees in even in linear algebra. So, that is the idea one can generalize even in the representation theory. It does not matter whether you are working with groups or algebras, associative algebras or Lie algebras. So, you can actually use these ideas okay, what I am going to talk about now uh, in order to break given representation into some smaller representation. So, let us see what is that idea. So, let us say you have an operator T. Okay. Let us say some algebra G is acting on V. Okay. Just say G acts on V. So, just for simplicity again we will assume dimension V to be finite dimensional. Okay, finite. So, if G acts on V, you, you can take it to be G Lie algebra, not a problem. So, now you have some operator, let us say T, which is inside endomorphism of V. So, this T is an operator from V to V. So, now assume that, so these are all hypothesis, okay, this is all assumption. So, there exists this uh, operator. T and then uh, this operator actually commutes with, with the action of G. So, what is the meaning of that? So, let us say uh, the action is given by this map phi. So, phi is a map from G to this GL of V. So, given x you have phi x. Okay. So, T commutes with the action of G means if you take this phi of x and then if you consider this map T they commute with each other. So, T phi of x is same as phi of x T and this is true for all x and G. Okay. So, this is what I mean by T commutes with the action of G. So, in this case what we can do we can actually, so because T is given to be a linear operator on capital V, we can talk about uh, eigenspace decomposition or generalized eigenspace decomposition. Okay. So, that is at least exists. So, so for example, you can talk about um, primary decomposition or cyclic decomposition and so on. But the thing is let us see what is useful for us. So, I would say uh, for us uh, primary decomposition will be much more useful because 
in the primary decomposition or otherwise this generalized eigenspace space decomposition each invariant spaces are given by kernel of this polynomial in T operator ok. So, let us let us make this remark ok this is a simple exercise maybe I will leave it as exercise. So, what I want to say suppose if I take a polynomial in T ok and then the look at the kernel. So, then so this will be a subspace of V ok. So, let uh, P of x inside your C x and consider this P of t which is a map from V to V. So, then we can talk about this kernel P of t ok. So, this is going to be a subspace of V. So, this is going to be a subspace of V. So, now what is my claim? My claim is this kernel P of t must be G invariant or G sub module of capital V ok. Because this information T commutes with phi of x that makes T actually G module homomorphism from V to V. So, in particularly uh, this P of T. So, this is also will become G module homomorphism from V to V because P of T also will commute with uh, the action of G. So, that makes this kernel P of T as a sub module ok or otherwise you can check directly there is no issue, but this is the reason because T commutes with phi of x for all x. So, that will imply P of T also will commute with phi of x for all x. So, that makes phi of P of T this map as G module homomorphism. So, that way we get this kernel P of T as a G sub module. So, now in particularly if I write V as direct sum of this generalized eigen spaces. So, this means direct sum of let us say theta where theta is coming from C. So, this is direct sum notation. So, where V theta is generalized eigen space let us say those vector V in V such that T minus theta identity power sum n V ok on V is 0. So, it is actually simple exercise uh, from linear algebra. So, even though you vary this n V ok. So, you can actually uh, prove that. Uh, so, there is a unique capital N such that uh, this V theta will become a kernel of T minus theta 1 power capital N ok. So, this I will leave it as exercise. So, this is not hard, but anyway. So, you can actually talk about this uh, what is called this uh, generalized Eigen space. So, now we have this uh, decomposition of capital V into this uh, direct sum of generalized Eigen space. So, this is called this what is called primary decomposition. What is important in the primary decomposition? All these V thetas which are which are occurring in this decomposition they are all kernel of some polynomial in T ok. In particularly from this earlier remark this V theta becomes G sub module of this capital V. So, in particularly we have written this V as direct sum of G sub representations ok. So, what we were interested in? We were interested in breaking down this capital V into some smaller representation. So, basically what actually this procedure tells if you are able to find ok. So, what is the strategy? So, the idea is ok find element T in endomorphism of V such that T commutes with the action of G. So, then this V into direct sum of this V theta, theta in C. 
So, this is going to be all G sub representation. Okay. So, this is one way to actually uh, break down V into direct sum of uh, smaller G sub representation. So, this is the idea that we are going to use now uh, in order to prove this uh, complete reducibility for SL2. For that uh, we need to find uh, given uh, this SL2 action of V, okay, we need to find an element inside this endomorphism of V uh, such that that actually commits with the action of SL2C. So, if you think about it actually, uh, so one can actually yeah, how one guesses this uh, element, uh, this is just by computation one actually can guess this element. So, we have to use only the information about SL2C in order to find this element. Okay. So, this is where we, we actually define what is called Casimir element. Okay. So, here is the definition of Casimir element. But again Casimir element is motivated from uh, the above discussion. Okay. You are supposed to find some element inside this endomorphism of V that actually commits with the action of SL2C. That is why you need this Casimir element. So, let us say V is uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2C. <coughs> what is this Casimir element? This Casimir element is actually element of this endomorphism of V that is given by x y plus y x plus h square by 2. Okay. So, maybe as an operator it is just uh, you can think like okay, this c of v to be x y of v. Okay, maybe let me use this representation notation so that it becomes more clear. So, let us say this phi is the representation that is actually given from SL2 C to this uh, endomorphism of V. Okay. So, then what is this C? C is nothing but you take it to be phi x phi y plus phi y phi x plus phi h square divided by 2. Okay. So, then this is an element of endomorphism of V. Endomorphism of V is an associative algebra. So, this all product addition everything makes sense inside endomorphism of V. So, now it is easy to check this C that we have defined it is actually commits with action of SL2C. For that we need to check what will happen if we apply with C bracket phi x and then C bracket phi y and then C bracket phi h. So, all this should be 0. So, it is enough to do only the first two because phi h is nothing but phi x phi y the bracket of this. So, if something commits with both phi x and phi y then it will commit with the with the leap uh, commutator bracket. So, this one will come for free. So, let us try to prove uh, this. Uh, so, I will verify only the first one. So, this one. Okay, let us take C phi x and then compute what it is and then we will see explicitly this is actually 0. So, the bracket C phi x uh, then this is nothing but we can we can start ignoring phi if you want, but anyway I will write it. So, phi x phi y plus phi y phi x plus phi of h square by 2 comma phi x. So, that is what this bracket. So, if you do the computation very explicitly, so first you take the product between them. So, phi x phi y phi x plus phi y phi x square plus phi h square by 2 phi x then minus phi x square phi y minus phi x phi y phi x minus phi x phi h square by 2. So, note that. So, this term phi x phi x phi y phi y and this phi x phi y phi x they get cancelled and we need to cancel others and then see what, what we get. Okay. So, now 
if you think about it, uh, so what is going to happen with uh, if you okay maybe we keep one of them and then try to commute others. Okay, just take this phi x phi y phi x square and then keep it as it is. Maybe this we can commute and then see what is happening. So you get phi h by two and then phi x phi h minus okay so the bracket of those two which is the bracket phi h phi x so then that is going to give us so this term that i am computing so this is the term let me call it uh, 2 okay the term 2 is if you take it to be phi h by 2 phi h phi x you replace by phi h phi x minus this and then here this phi h phi h by 2 will stay. So, then you can see that so this is exactly equal to phi h by 2 again phi x phi h minus phi h by 2 h x is 2 x. So, this is phi x times 2. Okay. So, now if you just uh, switch these two, so you can take 1 by 2 out, then you get phi x phi h square okay, and then minus 1 by 2 the bracket phi h phi x phi h minus phi h phi x. Okay, then you can see that, so this is going to give you 1 by 2 phi x phi h square and then this is going to give you 2 x. Okay, so, minus, so if you put 2 x there, uh, you get phi h phi x phi h and then minus phi h phi x. Okay. So, this is the term 2. So, this term 2 has this of phi h phi h square. So, that is going to get cancelled with this. So, then what remains is this. So, this is you can actually take it to be okay. So, you add and subtract and then you see that uh, okay. So, yeah we need to actually identify with this. So, we will take it to be this and then see. So, the left hand side which is this uh, C phi x okay. C phi x is equal to this is the term 2 which we are writing. So, this is already there, this is also we need to compute okay. Phi y phi x square and then if you use this, this is uh, let us say minus. So, I can also switch this okay if I switch phi h phi x and then minus plus the bracket h x which will be 2 phi x. Okay. But h x will be minus, so this will be minus this and then you will have this minus here that will add up here and then you can take this minus phi x square minus phi y minus phi x square phi y. So, again you just okay, switch these two and then try to compute uh, this you will see that this will become 0. Okay, maybe I will leave it to you if you keep the signs properly and it will not be a problem. But maybe like there is another way one can do this without doing much computation. Uh, so, let me actually think about it. So, if you have this 
uh, bracket x y. So, what is the thing that we have? So, if you take bracket x y, so that is x y minus y x. So, that is nothing but h. Okay. So, then c is nothing but what? C is, so let me drop this phi because phi is actually kind of gives me a headache. So, let us uh, drop this phi. So, then it, it is nothing but x y plus y x plus h square by 2. So, if you use this relation already you can add and subtract. So, it will it is going to give me. So, you add y x and then you subtract y x. So, it is going to give me h plus h square by 2 plus 2 y x. Okay. So, this is somewhat very simpler form. Maybe one can use this simpler form to compute. So, let us compute what is c x. So, c x will be h plus h square by 2 yeah, plus 2 y x comma x. So, but this is going to be h x plus h square by 2 x plus 2 y x x. So, if you just compute, so h s is going to give us 2 x and what is about uh, h square by 2 x. So, again if you do the computation, so let us do it here h square by 2 x minus x h is by 2. So, now you can keep h by 2 here. So, then it is uh, going to be h x. So, you add and subtract x y. Okay. So, then uh, here also you can add and subtract. So, you keep h x h x minus h x h by 2. So, what you get? You get h by 2. So, this is going to be bracket h x. So, that is 2 x and this is going to be as it is plus h by 2 h x minus this and this you can add up. So, this is going to be plus h x. So, 2 x h by 2 and then this is minus h x. So, h x h by 2. Okay. So, now you can see that some cancellations are happening. So, so this h square by 2 bracket x is nothing but this 2 2 can cancelled h x and this get cancelled with this plus this 2 get cancelled x h. So, then you have plus twice y x x. So, again you compute uh, the bracket y x x. So, that is going to be y x square minus x y x. Okay. So, here again you can replace this h x minus plus 2 h x. So, that is going to give me c x equal to. So, this is going to be plus 4 x and then plus 2 x h and then plus this y x square minus this. Okay. So, but if you if you actually replace this uh, y x uh, minus x y x. Okay, let us do this y x minus x y x plus x y x. So, that is what I am going to add and subtract. So, then this is going to get cancelled with this. Okay. So, so this is going to be uh, h x. Okay. So, then 4 x plus 2 x h. Uh, so, sorry this is y x minus h x. So, now uh, if you 
replace this okay so then what do you get you get 4x plus 2hx uh, yeah minus 2hx plus hx so this is going to be twice bracket minus this okay yeah I, I guess I'm getting one hx extra maybe I missed some calculation So, this is going to be minus 4 x. So, this is going to get cancelled, but this h x I am getting extra I do not know why. So, maybe I just uh, missed some 2 somewhere. So, if this is 2 then we are done. Okay. So, why that is 2 maybe it is uh, hidden somewhere. Okay. So, it is simply calculation nothing else you can actually verify not a problem. So, I will actually move ahead. So, only important thing is uh, this is uh, going to be inside uh, your uh, yeah this C that we have defined it is going to commute with the action of uh, SL to C. So, in particularly this is uh, going to give us uh, some uh, eigenspace decomposition. Okay. So, that eigenspace decomposition we will actually try to understand and then see what happens with. So, in if you start with this irreducible representation then what happens? So, if you take finite dimensional irreducible representation of S L to C. So, then you can see that uh, this element that we have actually written this C is nothing but what? So, this is uh, x y okay, let us let me recall this new version. So, this is uh, yeah h plus h square by 2 plus 2 y x. So, that is our uh, new element maybe we can write it as this also not a problem x y plus y x plus this h square by 2. Okay. So, now you just apply it on V naught and then see what happens. So, recall what is that V naught. So, V is nothing but V naught plus V 1 oh sorry the span by this V naught etcetera span of V naught V 1 etcetera V r okay, if this is equal to V of r. So, then you know that h v naught will be r v naught and then x v naught will be 0. Okay. So, using that you can actually calculate what is c v naught. You can see that c v naught is equal to uh, x y v naught plus y x v naught plus h square by 2 v naught. So, then what it is? So, x is going to kill so, it is going to give me just x y v naught plus h is going to give me d square by 2 d naught, but x v 1 we know already how it is okay. x v 1 is is nothing but d times v naught. So, if you use that then you get c v naught is nothing but d square by 2 plus d v naught. Okay. But what is Schur's lemma says? Schur's lemma says C commutes with uh, uh, this action of G. So, C is actually uh, G model map from V of D to sorry V of here I have written as R okay, let us switch this to D. So, C is going to give me map from V of D to V of D. So, which is a G model map. So, using Schur's lemma, 
we see that this c has to be some identity times some lambda times identity times v okay so in particularly if you are interested in calculating what is this lambda to be you can calculate it from this equation okay so in particularly what will be lambda so lambda will be exactly d square by 2 plus t so that is the lambda so basically our calculation tells that this cosmere element acts very specifically on this given uh, d plus 1 dimensional irreducible representation which is exactly uh, d plus d square by 2. Okay, I will stop here because we are running out of time. Uh, I will continue in the next lecture the proof of this complete reducibility. Thank you.